great, great Saturday, 14th day of October. Actually, it's, it's Sunday because it's 1235. Just finished getting my hair did done. You know what I'm saying? About 10 minutes ago. So here we are. It's a great day. Spend most of this day cleaning, doing the work, you know, that we most avoid so often. Not just cleaning, but other little things, you know. Doing the work that hides the magic that I'm looking for in life. The magic is found in the things that we don't wanna do, so I spent all day this day doing things that I often avoid doing. Those things that are not so exciting, as exciting as working out, running, training, doing physically challenging things that make me feel as though I have done something productive. I didn't spend this day training, I spent it doing other, uh, menial things you get what I'm saying but also got to clean the whole place you know swept mopped wiped down switched some things around so yeah you know what I'm saying got some things done took the clothes to the laundromat had a nice little disagreement with the moms and Learning, man, learning that sometimes the fool that won't get the lesson, that doesn't get the message, it's not so often outside of us, but it's the fool that we look at in the mirror every day we wake up. So coming to that realization that we can't teach old dogs new tricks and that often it's best to just step back and recognize that it's best to just work on self. Do what you can and then just let things be. Hope for the best and set your expectations on yourself so that you're never disappointed by others. Proverbs 14, the Proverbs of the soul of man, the wisest and richest that ever lived. The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. He who walks in his uprightness respects the most high God, but he who is perverse in his ways despises him. In the mouth of a fool is the rod of arrogance but the lips of the wise will preserve them. Where no oxen are, the trough is clean, but much increase comes by the strength of an ox. A faithful witness does not lie, but a false witness utters lies. A pessimistic doubter seeks wisdom and does not find it, but knowledge is easy to him who understands. Go from the presence of a foolish man when you do not perceive in him the lips of knowledge. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. The folly of fools is deceit. Fools mock at sin, but among the upright there is favor. The heart knows his own bitterness, and a stranger does not share his joy. The house of the wicked will be overthrown, but the tent of the upright will flourish. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Even in laughter the heart may sorrow, and the end of myrrh may be grief. The backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. The simple believes every word, but the prudent considers well his steps. A wise man is mindful and departs from evil, but a fool rages in his self-confidence. A quick-tempered man acts foolishly, and a man of wicked intentions is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The evil will bow before the good, 
and the wicked at the gates of righteous of the righteous the poor man is hated even by his own neighbor damn but the rich has many friends he who despises his neighbor sins but he who has mercy on the poor happy is he do they not go astray who devise evil but mercy and truth belong to those who devise good in all labor there is profit but idle chatter leads only to poverty the crown of the wise is their riches but the foolishness of fools is folly a true witness delivers souls but a deceitful witness speaks lies in the trust of the lord there is no there is strong confidence and his children would have a place of refuge the love of the lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death in the multitude of counselors is a king's honor but in the lack of people and counsel is the downfall of a prince he who is slow to wrath has great understanding but he who is impulsive exalts fully a sound heart is life to the body but envy is rottenness to the bones he who oppresses the poor reproaches his maker but he who honors him has mercy on the needy the wicked ban is banished his by his wickedness but the righteous has a refuge in death wisdom rests in the heart of him who has understanding but what is in the heart of the fools is made known righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach to any people the king's favor is toward a wise servant but his wrath is against him who causes shame. A sound heart is life to the body. A sound and healthy and peaceful and loving and grateful, appreciative heart. Balanced emotions are life to the body. Yet envy is rottenness to the bones. That's powerful right there. The envious person is an ungrateful and hateful person. They hate others and hate on others because of what others have and they wish to have, but don't. They don't appreciate what they have and so they envy others. They might be richer than others and they won't even see it because envy won't allow them to see it. Envy is very ungrateful. It is ungrateful. Uh, destructive and degenerative personality trait but a sound heart a happy heart a balanced heart is life to the body in the multitude of counselors you will find honor if you are you know counseled by individual that have your best interest at heart and whom will give you advice that may at times not be as pleasing as you would want them to be yet it is honest yet in the lack of counsel is the downfall of a prince the love of the lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death living in grateful appreciation to life for the life that we have and all the things that we are fortunate to enjoy will keep us in greater closer connection to the source from which all things that allow us to be grateful flow from there was a book i read i think it's the power of your subconscious mind by uh joseph murphy or somebody like that I think it might be this book, but in this book, they, they studied one community of centurions. I think it was in Japan or in China. And they found that in this community of centurions, meaning people that lived to be over a hundred years old, you know, a lot of them smoked, a lot of them drank, a lot of them ate animals. But the one thing that they all had in common was that they were always in grateful appreciation of every smoke, of every drink, of everything that they consumed, they always did it in a constant state of gratitude. You will also notice that, you know, food from mom tastes a lot different than food from other people, especially if, if the food from mom or grandma or whomever is cooking the food 
is being cooked with love. Love is an ingredient. Love is an ingredient that we put into, into the crafts that we practice, into the meals that we cook for ourselves and for our loved ones, into the meals that we eat that are cooked for us, into the way that we treat people, into the way that we treat ourselves, and into the way that, you know, we conduct ourselves in every day, in every moment of every day. Love is an ingredient that many are lacking in life, and that many, if they were aware of the importance of love, they would do everything with love, and everything in their life would change for the better. Love is enthusiastic. It is compassionate. It is giving. It is honest. It is true. It is a way. A wise man is mindful and departs from evil. The crown of the wise is their riches. And in all labor, there is profit. Always keep that in mind, family. In all labor, there is profit. So whatever you do, do it enthusiastically. And if it is, and if it is a, 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 a job that, you know, you don't enjoy as much, then appreciate it for the meantime. And then figure out how long you're willing to do this job. Or how long it would take you to continue to do this job in order for you to amass enough finance finances to be able to produce something out of the job that you are doing now. So on your off time, work on your other craft. Work on the craft that has nothing to maybe has nothing to do with your job, but it has something to do with your you your own unique predispositions to the various mechanisms and mediums of success that are available to us today. Technology, you know what I'm saying? These social media platforms, uh, in-person business, pop-up shops, whatever it is, martial arts, whatever it is that you are able to do to teach, maybe telemarketers, maybe you've developed the skill for telemarketing and now you can take that telemarketing skill overseas, purchase some land, or purchase some, some property, hire some, some callers, teach them what you learn, pay them half or you know three fourths of the of the amount that they are paid in other places. So you, you pay accordingly. You pay accordingly rather than trying to undercut the competition in every way and also not pay the people they're just due. They are those who make themselves poor yet have great riches. And those that have great riches give little and make themselves poor. There is always a way that seems right to us, but the most high within us that sits up here. It knows and it directs our steps. So lean not on your own understanding. And in all you do, just trust. Trust the Most High has the best intentions for you. And just do your best and nothing less. Other than that, I'm out of here. You have a blessed one. All right, it's been your God, Superconscious. Sosa, Superconscious, living, Superconscious, thus. You have a supremely wonderful and wholesome evening and life on love.